Chapter 7 Getting to Know Plants Plants are all around us. There are so many of them in different shapes and sizes. Plants are the primary producers on earth. They make food and oxygen for us, both of which are necessary for our survival. Human beings and animals depend upon plants for food. Introduction Plants are a major component of our ecosystem. They are found everywhere in every type of climate. They adapt in the surrounding where they are found. Their bodies are modified according to the resources available to them. Some of them are very small, others are bigger. Go on a nature walk and look around. Observe closely the kinds of plants and study their stems carefully. Let us learn how plants are classified into different groups according to their size and type of the stem. How many kinds of plants are there? Plants can be grouped into four categories. Trees. These are big plants with thick hard brown stem which is called trunk. Their stems branch out and roots go deep into the soil. For example, guava tree, peepal tree and banyan tree. Trees like coconut and date palm do not have branches. Shrubs. These are plants with woody stem. They have branches near the surface of the soil and do not grow as tall as trees. For example, rose and bougainvillea. Herbs. These are plants with soft green stem. They are generally short in height. For example, coriander, rosemary and thyme. Creepers and climbers. These are weak stemmed plants and hence cannot grow erect without support. Creepers spread horizontally along the soil. For example, watermelon, pumpkin and bitter gourd are creepers. The other type is climbers. They take support of an object or a tree for climbing. They simply twine in a spiral way around the support available to them. For example, money plant, pea and grape vines are climbers. What is the structure of plants? Plants may be very different from each other, but most plants have some common body parts. A typical plant body has the root system and the shoot system. Root system. It is the part of the plant that grows into the soil away from sunlight. Shoot system. It is the part of the plant that grows above the soil towards the sunlight. It includes the stem, branches, leaves, flowers and fruit. Let us learn about these parts in detail. Root system. The root is the part of a plant that grows deep into the soil and anchors the plant straight and upright. Thus, roots are structures moving away from sunlight. Go to an area where there are lots of weeds. Dig out some and observe their roots carefully. Do all have the same kind? You may see something similar to the following figures. Roots can be classified into two types on the basis of their branching pattern. Tap roots. The main root develops and becomes prominent. This is the primary root. Many lateral or secondary roots come out from the primary root. Some of the examples are pea and mango plant. Fibrous root. There is no main root. A bunch of roots develop and spread out into the soil. Adventitious roots. These look like fibrous roots, but they arise from other parts of plants like stem or leaves. Functions of roots. What do you think roots do for a plant? Functions of roots. Roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. These are required for plants to carry out their vital life functions. Roots spread out and anchor the plant firmly to the ground. If you try to pull out a plant, you will see it is difficult and needs force. Roots provide the support to the plant to stand erect and grow. By holding on to the soil, roots bind it together and thus prevent soil from being blown away by wind or water. Some roots perform additional functions. Have you observed carrot, radish or turnip? They are roots which are store food to use it when needed. They are called modified roots. Some plants such as banyan trees have roots for additional support. 
they come out from branches and grow towards the soil they are known as prop roots similarly sugarcane has tilled roots present in the lower part of its stem which prevents it from tilting to one side many plants have roots to support and help the plant climb shoot system the parts that are above the ground in a plant forms its shoot system they are the stem leaves flowers and fruit stem it bears leaves flowers and fruit it connects all these parts with the root it can be hard and woody as in a tree or soft and green as in herbs observe a stem carefully the points from where leaves grow are called nodes and the part between two nodes is the internode angle formed between the stalk of a leaf and the stem is called its axil there are buds at those points and branches come out from there functions of stems it bears aerial parts of the plant it holds them upright so that the leaves get the maximum sunlight it it acts as a connecting link by transporting water and minerals from the roots to the other parts and food from the leaves to all parts of the plant stems in some plants also store food these are called modified stems for example plants like potato and ginger in plants found in desert the stem is green and carries out photosynthesis it is also thick and fleshy to store water in climbers stems have modified thread like coiled growth called tendrils to twine around any support leaf leaves are called the kitchen of a plant the green pigment present in leaves is called chlorophyll and it makes food by photosynthesis different plants have leaves with different shapes and sizes observe the variety of leaves around you are all of them green let us observe the structure of leaves all leaves have a basic common structure the flat green surface or blade is called lamina it is attached to the stem at a point called the stalk or petiole there are thin pipe like structures all over the leaves these are called veins veins form a network in the lamina and transport substances to and from the leaf the arrangement of the veins in the lamina is called venation two types of venations are seen in leaves reticulate venation it is generally found in plants with tap root system a central main vein or midrib extends from the petiole into the lamina smaller veins extend out of the midrib and form a network for example leaves of peepal rose and oak tree parallel venation observe the pattern of veins in different leaves around you in some you will find parallel veins this is called parallel venation and is generally found in plants with fibrous root system for example grass and paddy by just looking at its leaves you can tell whether a plant has a tap root or a fibrous root functions of leaves leaves manufacture food with the help of chlorophyll present in them and with sunlight water and carbon dioxide this process is called photosynthesis in this process chlorophyll changes water and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen with the help of sunlight glucose is a simple carbohydrate which is then converted into other complex nutrients thus leaves are the kitchen of a plant leaves have tiny pores called stomata for the exchange of gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide stomata also help plants to lose excess water this process is known as transpiration here is an activity that shows transpiration in some plants leaves are modified into tendrils for support example pea plant in plants found in deserts leaves are reduced to spines to prevent water loss spines also discourage animals from eating the plant flowers flower is the most colorful and attractive part of a plant the stalk that holds the flower is called pedicel the upper swollen part of the pedicel is known as thalamus the rest of the parts are arranged on the thalamus in circles and are known as valves 
The outermost parts of flowers are leafy green structures called sepals which protect the inner part. Next to the sepals are colorful and bright petals. Petals help in attracting insects for pollination. Inner to petals are the main reproductive parts of a plant. The male part is called stamen and the female part is called pistil. A stamen has a filament with a swollen tip known as anther. If you touch the tip, the powdery substance rubbed off on your fingers is pollen. Pistil has a swollen base which is the ovary. It has a stalk called style. The tip of the style is sticky and is called stigma. If you cut the ovary, you will see small egg-like structures. These are ovules which later develop into seeds. All flowers may not have all the four parts. For example, in papaya, plant male and female flowers are on different plants. Sometimes in some flowers, sepals and petals are not found as separate structures. They form single type of rolls called tepals. Example, the lily flower. Functions of flowers. Flowers help plants to reproduce by forming fruits and seeds. The colorful petals and sweet smell of flowers attract insects and birds. When an insect sits on a flower, the pollens stick to its body. When the same insect goes and sits on another flower, the pollens get transferred to the stigma. This process is called pollination. After pollination, the ovary slowly changes into fruit and the ovules change into seeds. Seeds have a baby plant. They also contain some food for the baby plant. When the seeds get enough air and water, the baby plant starts growing. Observe a gram seed or lentil seed after soaking it in water for 5 to 6 hours. The skin becomes soft and you can open it into two halves. At the base of the joint, you will observe a tiny growth, which is the baby plant. The two halves are called cotyledons and they store the food for the seed. The seed grows into a baby plant in the presence of air and water. Then it needs to be sowed into the soil to grow further.